Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. For today's video, I am using the new Atelier inks from Ink on 3. These came out a couple months ago. I'm honestly foggy on when they came out. I was going to order them and then Ink on 3 sent them to me, which I was very excited because I was literally like had them in my cart. Um, because these are new inks. These are the eight colors that are available as of right now. I've listed and you can pause the screen if you want, like some of the qualities of them, they are, they're different. Um, they have this very smooth foam pad. They are basically kind of like watercolors in an ink pad format. I'm not going to get really in depth with these right now because these are literally the first time I'm actually getting a chance to use them because I was so unbelievably sick for a month or whatever it was that I just never got a chance to really play around with them. So today's video is going to be just a very simple, very small use of them. But then over time, I'm gonna start playing with them more and more to do, you know, backgrounds and, and fiddling and layering and all that fun stuff. But what I wanna do with today's card is I'm using um, Simon Says Stamps new Be Kind stamp set. And I am going to heat emboss this image. Now with, oh, with those Atelier inks, um, they're technically also meant to go with Ink on 3's um, fade out, like no line coloring ink. And I will link to that. I'll also link to all the inks, even though I only use some of them. Um, so you can do gorgeous, you know, no line watercoloring with them. I've mentioned this in other videos. I struggle with no line coloring. Biggest reason being I am very impatient. <laughs> so rather than fiddle with no line, I might try it more down the road. It's one of those things where you really do need to practice it and I'm impatient. So I heat embossed this image. So I stamped it with Ink on 3's Juicy Clear Embossing Ink. And then I used Ranger's Liquid Platinum Embossing Powder and heat embossed this image. And I stamped it onto Ranger's Distress Watercolor Paper. And then I'm working on my little waffle flower uh, silicone water media mat. And I'm just going to take my ink pad colors. I'm using goddess green, uh, a little bit of bee sting yellow. I like the names of these, by the way. Uh, peacock blue and my jam purple. And I'm just pressing the very edge of the ink pad onto the water media mat. You could use any non-porous surface for this, like a ceramic plate or uh, plastic packaging, just anything that won't absorb the ink. You could just press the ink pads onto it and color like that. So I press the ink pads and then I'm just picking up the color with a wet paintbrush. I'm using just my Zen, uh, Royal and Magnical Zen water brush. This is the size number four. And I'm just getting the brush wet with water and then just picking up the ink from the media mat and then painting it onto these leaves. And each leaf I would get wet first with just a little bit of clean water and then bring in the ink. And I started with the green and then I would kind of drop in a little bit of that yellow and a little bit of the blue. And then I'm trying to be very careful with that purple. <laughs> I was kind of thinking eucalyptus because you know they have that little bit of purple to them. Um, but with purple, you need to be careful because like purple and yellow and green can end up making mud. So it would look like dead leaves if you mix it too much. But I'm just putting that little bit of purple on just the very edge of the leaves. Just, it really looks pretty. So like the title of the video says, this is a first impression. My first impression is these are really nice. I really like them, but I need, again, I need to play with them more. But for all the years I've been doing stamping and you know, I've watercolored, you can watercolor with so many types of inks. I've shown it in tons of videos. Um, these behave similarly, but again, I'm only doing a small little image. I do want to experiment more with like, you know, larger scale, but I assume they will work quite fabulously. Um, I've shown Ink on 3's other inks, like the the um, Blackout ink is amazing. I mentioned the Fade Out. I use the Juicy Clear one for embossing all the time. Very high quality. I really like using their products. I have a feeling that these are amazing inks. And I'm sure there's a ton of other more in-depth videos already available that you guys could search out. And then down the road, I'll do more. But I enjoyed like watercoloring this uh, little leaf image here. And I just worked my way from leaf to leaf. And like I've mentioned in other videos, um, I like, that's why I like heat embossing my images and prefer that over no line or even just stamping an image and watercoloring it. Having that heat embossed gives it that raised edge so I can just go from one to the next to the next and I don't have to worry about anything like bleeding into the other area, anything like that, because it's all contained within the heat embossing and that just makes me happy. 
So I let this dry completely. And then I just picked up the ink off the mat with my wet paintbrush and just did a very light splatter. It was mentioned in a, a recent video. They were like, where's the splatter? You know, it depends, you know, what I'm doing, whether or not I'm going to add. But of course I had to add a little bit, but I kept it subtle. I just wanted to add a little bit of splatter. And I made sure, like I said, that my image was dry because if I splattered over it while the ink was still wet, it would just, the splatter would just obviously absorb and kind of blend into those colors. So I did a little bit of splatter and then I'm going to let that completely dry again. Wiped off my water media mat. These inks cleaned up really well. Again, it depends. Like the water media mat as well can stain. It depends on the pigments being used and that sort of thing. Um, so far I've kind of escaped mine staining, but it, it's going to happen eventually and I'll be okay with it when it does. So I did that. I was going to leave this as is, but then I decided to stamp on top of this image, which honestly I was like, I could probably be ruining this right now. So I pulled out my Misty and the UR background stamp, took the foam out of my Misty. I put a little bit of repositionable adhesive on the back of that cardstock, lined up with a stamp, shut the Misty base onto the lid so that the cardstock was adhered onto the inside of the Misty. And then I inked up that stamp with Simon Says Stamps Fossil ink, just the perfect neutral. And I stamped it right on top and I wasn't sure what was going to happen or whether or not I ruined it. And it turned out perfect. I like how it looks. You'll, you can see it in the close-up picture at the end and on my blog. It made the leaves look almost transparent. You know, it just, it's fun. So after I did that, I decided to do the same thing with my card base, which is Nina Desert Storm cardstock. So I did the exact same thing. I have my card base. I'm going to mask off what will be the top inside of the card, like right above the score line. I put a little bit more of that repositional adhesive on the very back of the card base, lined it up on the stamp, closed the base onto the lid, flipped it over again, and then I'm inking up the stamp again with that fossil ink. And I gotta say, the fossil ink on Nina Desert Storm is another favorite now. I really like how this looks. So I stamped that image onto the inside of the card. And then I'm going to go back to using my mini Misty. You don't need both. I wasn't planning on using that background stamp and just, it just happened. <laughs> kind of obsessed with it right now. So I put this back in my mini Misty where I still had the, the leaf image. So pulled that out and then I'm going to stamp that onto the inside as well with that same fossil ink, just to kind of tie it all together. I just, I get, I really like how that looks. That background stamp is just perfect. So I stamped that and then I'll remove that post-it tape and then I'll remove the adhesive on the back of the card with my little adhesive eraser. I've been showing that quite a few times in recent videos. And then for my card front, I'm going to stamp one of the sentiments from the uh, Be Kind set. And I edited this out because you wouldn't see it anyway. My head was literally in the way because I made sure that I got the stamp lined up perfectly because it's just a long, thin, narrow sentiment. So I lined it up and then I'm stamping that with uh, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And then once that's stamped, I am going to stamp the inside of the card with a couple more sentiments from the Be Kind set. So on the front, it's going to say, in a world where you can be anything. And then on the inside, I'll say, be kind, which is one of my favorite phrases because it is very, very true. So I lined up the Be Kind sentiment in kind of the same way I lined up the one on the front. So got that lined up in my mini Misty and then I'm going to stamp that as well with that VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. So got that stamped and then I'm going to die cut the card front with one of the um, A2 thin frames wafer dies, the second largest one. So I want to make sure I have this lined up perfectly straight. So I get this lined up and then I'm just using more of that post-it tape to hold this in place and then I'm going to run it through my die cut machine. And then I ran it through my die cut machine a second time with more of that Nina Desert Storm cardstock. And that rectangle that's left over, I'm just going to put it with the cardstock because I'll use it on a future project. So to adhere everything, I'm going to adhere the outer portion of the Distress watercolor paper first. I just add some Craft Tacky adhesive around that and then I line that up onto my card base. And this was already four and a quarter by five and a half, so it's going to completely cover my card base. So once I have that adhered into place and lined up, I'm then going to apply more of the Craft Tacky adhesive all around the very edge of the inner part of this frame and then all along the center of the card here. And then I'm going to inlay that uh, Desert Storm frame that I had die cut 
and then the actual card front here. So that little frame that was left over, I could have adhered it on the inside. I did that in a recent video as well, but for this, I decided not to. I just liked how this all looked, just the way it was. So got that adhered. And then I decided to um, grab an envelope from my stash. I just have this purple envelope in my stash. And I'm going to put this into my Misty, which I'm going to put the foam back in to my Misty, line up my envelope here, and then I'm going to use that leaf stamp again. So I'm going to line this up on my envelope and I'm just going to ink it up with two of those Atelier inks. These are supposed to be really, really good for stamping because they have that pigment, like the high quality pigment to them. So I was like, they will show up on dark colors then if that's the case. So I inked it up with the green, the goddess green, and then I just used the very corner of the My Jam Purple ink pad just to add a little bit to the edges of the leaves. It's very subtle because, you know, I'm stamping it on purple, so it's not going to show up really well, but it's just a little extra something. So I added that and then I'm going to stamp that onto my envelope. So that just, you know, creates a little matchy matchiness. So after I stamped that, I was going to leave it here, <laughs> but again, I think you guys know what's going to happen. <laughs> I was going to leave it here, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't leave it like this. I just, I had to add just a little bit of bling. I couldn't resist. So I have um, some Studio Cadia June. I think these are the June crystals. I'll have them linked with all the rest of the supplies just to kind of pull out more of that little bit of purple. So I just kind of place them around this little, you know, leaf branch. And then I'm adhering them into place with my Craft Tacky Glue and the Studio Cadia Embellishment Wand. And then once that's added, this card and envelope is complete. So like I mentioned in the video, I'll do more videos like down the road, you know, as you know, I'm always posting videos, but I'll do more with these inks, experiment more with them, share my thoughts, all that stuff. But for now, I quite like what I'm seeing and how these were, but I'll do more with them. Um, and then, yeah, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with all the links to everything if you want to check that out below. If you're interested, they're all going to be there. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!